Right, okay then, so this is um, we're just uh, this is a quick guide to setting up and programming the DCC stuff. Um, so what we've got is the uh, is uh, our laptop um, and it's uh, connecting up via USB over to the program module uh, the, what was it, the Hornby e-link thing um, and then we've got the tracks in the inserted in the prog uh, AB uh, patch uh, with the red going to the white stripped stuff um, and that follows through onto the track then we've got our one of our trains there with uh, with the chip on board there just there is the chip um, and that's all kept been put on the rails quite clear carefully the rails are cleaned um, we've done this a few times before so we know it's a it's a working rig because um, we do run into problems with some of these chips accessing them um, so on the computer <clears throat> what we're running is um, the Hornby Railmaster DCC control system uh, which I got to via that link there Hornby Railmaster and so I've loaded up the application, it takes a few minutes to um, to load up and then um, I come into here now <clears throat> the second icon in on the main menu there um, here is for setting up the locomotives so I'm going in here this is coming up with our list of got a list of trains that we've already set up on here uh, we haven't really done anything with that bit yet and then this stuff is for adding new locomotives but because we're doing the programming we're going to program the chip first and then set it up on this list um, and the reason for that is then that we can just put in the locomotive ID straight away uh, and the train config and then just add it uh, just hit save uh, there and it'll just add it to the list and we're done and it's a lot simpler workflow so to program the to program the chip and set it up we're going to go to this blue eye icon here so there we go locomotive settings this brings up the CV settings panel uh, now the way this works is that you have this at the top here you have the CV ranges uh, to, to read and this is basically saying which of these settings you want to or which range of them you want to set now for the most part the easiest thing to do is just set it to from one to one so that it reads the first locomotive address uh, because this is really all that we're interested in at the moment um, so one to one is that 12 seconds seems to be the default uh, read pause and then we just go down to the green cursor and hit that we get a message saying that uh, this isn't currently attaching it to any of the trains in this list back here uh, which is okay because we're going to add it to the list later so just for the moment it won't save any of the CV settings that we set which is fine um, so we're going to continue so now it's reading and here we wait <laughs> um, so of course this can come up with error sometimes and if it does then maybe the, the rig is not set right or maybe the chip is plain bust Ah, and yet again we've got another one here that might be bust so um, we'll, we'll have to just wait for it to come out um, what I would suggest doing if this happens is to check the manufacturer ID and see if that returns uh, because if that returns there's a um, you know maybe just that the chip isn't really set up right because everything should be able to read the manufacturer ID failing that will then try to run a reset uh, on the chip okay so there's a message saying that the CVs couldn't be read do we want to continue reading them well if we, if we don't it might uh, th that's for when it's reading a range of them so because we've only read one it doesn't matter which we which we tick so um, it will come off so we get unobtainable as the item so we're just going to try doing it uh, sorry, on the manufacturer's ID so up at the top here in the range we'll set 8 to 8 oops 81 no 8 and then um, save that 
oh sorry, retrieve them. Yes, yeah, so we want to continue. <clears throat> No, okay, so it hasn't read it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and do a reset on this chip. Uh, to do the reset, we're going to write, what was it, two? Two. Two, because this, this is an OPR1 chip. Um, so different chips do have different resets, but it usually involves writing some code to the manufacturer ID. So we'll see if we, uh, come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this time. Okay, so this is warning, just saying. Normally, you can't write to it because it's a it's a read-only value, but some chips allow the, a reset by writing to it. Uh, so we want to continue. Yes, and we're going to write. Um, so so we click on this value field and we enter two, uh, and then I'm going to tab away from it. Okay, and then down in the bottom left corner, down here, is where you write to the chip. So we hit that, so now it's writing, and we'll see if it works. Uh, so confirming means that it's reading it back in, so the write has most likely worked. Um, now, there's a chance that this can fail to confirm, but it will still have actually done the reset. Probably because the firmware is still kind of sort of rebooting or whatever, the, the chip. takes a really, really long time. Ah, there we go. So it's failed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this screen. Okay. Um, can you take the actual train off and put it back on again? Because I think that might... Th you want to change the chip? It, no, no, not change the chip, but just take it off the thing. Just because I think it might be that taking it off the power might kind of it reset down? it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because we did. this is what we did last time and it seemed to then start getting a response. Okay. Um, so let's have another go. So I'm hitting the blue eye button. Uh, let's go. Uh, well, let, let's leave it on manufacturer ID and see if that works. Yep, I'll continue. No, this is not looking good. <laughs> to try a different chip. Yeah, I think we'll try. We'll try a different chip.